Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. Uh, today's our seasonal gardening uh, webinars. We're gonna cover great plant gift ideas for Mother's Day. Let's look for an exquisite plant for that very special lady in your life. So my name is David Rodriguez. I'm the horticulturalist with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service here in Bear County. That's my email address. So don't hesitate if you have any gardening or landscape questions to send me an email. And uh, we're part of the uh, university, the uh, land grant university, Texas A&M University. The extension service is the educational arm funded separately from the university. And we have a unique partnership in the 254 counties in our great state of Texas. So we offer uh, many educational uh, seminars and uh, the gardening with seasonality, such as our Mother's Day uh, gift plan ideas today. So Texas A&M University, uh, the oldest public institute of higher education, and we're the educational arm of the university. So that's a picture of me, David Rodriguez there. So um, um, if you need any other gardening or landscape questions, please visit our Bear County Extension Service website for more information on that as well. So let's cover about three or four major plants, old traditional plants that have been given uh, during the Mother's Day uh, celebration. One of the old ones that have been on the market for many, many years is gardenias. And grandma and ma and your aunts uh, used to always get these plants and it's a traditional plant. Uh, they're a little bit specialized plants. So gardenias, of course, have the beautiful white flowers. They're very fragrant. They have a perfumey fragrance to them. There's old varieties that have been around for many years, including Mystery, August Beauty, and Vichii, just to name a few of them. They're very specialized plants. When you're looking for this plant, I would try not to get a floral type of our gardenia because often they look real pretty as a gift plant, but they really don't last too long. So right now, during the month of April and May, going to your favorite independent nursery or garden center, you should be able to find landscape type gardenias in containers, which most of them are budded or blooming for the Mother's Day week. So try to get these varieties, August Beauty and Mystery, VCI, just to name a few of them. They really, really do best in a container, but you can grow some in the landscape. Uh, they prefer an area that gets a good amount of early morning sun, maybe shade in the July, August heat, or all day filter light. They are what we refer to as an acid loving plant. So that's why we really tell folks to put them in a real nice size container with a premium peat based potting mix that has Canadian peat moss in it for the acidity and maybe cut that potting mix with about 20% finished compost. And then when they're actively growing, since they have a very shiny green uh, leaf to them and they like the acidity, if you can collect rainwater to water them, uh, that would be even best. And then maybe on a weekly basis throughout the spring, early summer and fall time, uh, use a water soluble fertilizer Use a slow release container fertilizer, maybe early March, early June, early September, three times a year, uh, such as Osmocote or something just specifically for uh, containers that are slow release. Uh, you can grow them in the ground, but you uh, really have to amend that soil. So I think the folks that have the best luck with gardenias are the ones that try to grow them as a nice uh, plant on the patio in a beautiful container. They're bushes. They typically grow three or four feet tall, but you can also find them in these super cool gift idea as a pom-pom, single pom-pom like this patio uh, gardenia. And uh, that would make an awesome, wonderful gift uh, to give for the Mother's Day weekend. The other nice traditional mothers, old fashioned Mother's Day gift are hydrangeas or what we call in Spanish, potencias. It's an old, old-fashioned plant. These are floral-grade hydrangeas up the road in Blanco, Texas. We have Clay Pack Brothers, probably the state's best floral grower. And so you see a lot of these are florists in, the, in places like that that sell these plants for special occasions like Mother's Day. 
Traditionally, they have those big, huge pink pom-pom flowers to them. Very beautiful. That's the traditional color. And if you use specialty acidity on them, uh, such as aluminum sulfate, what the growers do when they're just starting to bud, they can basically revert pink into that blue, bluish color, uh, kind of like the old-fashioned litmus test when we learned about uh, simple chemistry years back. So that's how they get that blue, blue color. And sometimes uh, they can also turn pink into white by using magnesium sulfate at the bud stage as well. So you buy these big pom-poms, they're, they're huge flowers. You really, really want to handle these with care when you uh, purchase them and, and take them home. But you almost need to place these floral hydrangeas in a dish of water, filling it up no more than three quarters of the way up so they can take water through the root system and the weep hose in the bottom of that container. And that's through like kind of like a straw effect, capillary action because in order to sustain that big blossom on it they really have really have to be on that moist side what a lot of people do with these old-fashioned uh, plants after the mother's day uh, holiday when they start blooming out they bet she's basically remove the spent flower and then just upgrade them into a, another large container and grow it similar to the gardenia uh, as a peat base plants you know they need the acidity they need to be fertilized often and ideally on your very very specialized plants collecting rainwater they would really benefit that you'll get them to bloom maybe a few blooms in the fall but these large florist type ones it's real real hard to get that big uh, pom-pom flower back on them so i've even seen people plant them in the landscape but it's a pretty tough plant to grow in the landscape but it's an old old-fashioned plant Another old-fashioned plant that we, we see throughout the year, not only for mother as a Mother's Day gift, is your peace lily. Beautiful white flowers on them. People refer to them as closet plants. It makes a wonderful indoor plant. But I really don't, I really don't like that name closet plant because people think it's a, a very low-light indoor plant. But really, it really does much better if you put it near a window. Uh, you rotate it every so often so it gets uh, ample sunlight through all the uh, canopy of the plant. Very, very shiny leaves. And, you know, like indoor furniture, house plants should be dusted off every so often so it can have that nice sheen to the leaves. But peace lily closet plant is an easy to care for indoor plant that will bloom often, and that's another consideration. So old traditional plants that have been around for many, many years are gardenias, floral hydrangeas, and the peace lily. So the next few plants we're going to show you are all basically Texas Superstar plants. The Texas Superstar plant program started here in the San Antonio area with Dr. Jerry Parsons when he started with the Blue Bonnet. And we have about 92 plants in the Texas Superstar program which are predominantly perennials, hardy perennial plants, a few annuals, a few fruit trees, a few vegetables, but predominantly low input plants, hardy plants, plants that really bloom quite a bit throughout the year, and plants that I think that we're going to show you a few of them, your mother or that special lady in your life would really enjoy. More information on the Texas Superstar Plant Program can be found on the Aggie Horticulture website. So the only florist plant that has been designated as a Texas superstar plant is the moth orchid. And it's also referred to as Phalaenopsis orchid. This is the easiest orchid to grow. It has a big flower, and they come in an array of different color flowers. Many, many years ago, orchids were very hard to come by. But Research Extension um, did a lot of work many years down in Wesico in the valley. And with big orchid growers, such as McKellen Botanicals, through uh, Florida and through Thailand and growers like that throughout the world, have really made this a good price point plant and readily available at $20 or so. 
and these plants really perform. The challenge when you go, when you purchase a moth orchid, your Phalaenopsis orchid, is finding that color because there's so many different colors to choose from. Again, it's the only floral quality one we have on the market. Look at all those colors. Which one do you would, would give as a gift? They're so beautiful, aren't they? And they look like little moths, big moth, and that's why they call it moth orchid. I like this white one with the red center, and then the dark, dark purple one is also my favorite color as well. So we grow it as an indoor gift type plant. They bloom for a very long period of time. It's not a typical potted type plant. If you can see at the container, you got the aerial roots. So these are epiphytic type plants. You see them in their tropical areas and jungles growing on the canopy of the trees with the air roots coming out of them. And uh, so they're, they're, they get all the moisture energy from the sun, from the air. And so we don't pot them up like we would do a traditional plant. We basically grow them in orchid bark, are typically fir bark. So those appendages, those roots that come out of that container, a lot of people don't like it or they don't they don't think it's correct, so they cut them. So you don't want to cut them. So you want to put these uh, moth orchids and many orchids in general in these large enough pots, let the roots come out, and then you probably want to mist them on high. I would again use uh, um, good water, rain water, or reverse osmosis water, and maybe mist uh, the very top, not directly on the flowers, but above, maybe once a week or so to build that humidity. Some people would put these in um, saucers as well, maybe with a little gravel and a little bit of water to get that humidity up. They like light. Uh, the plant should be rotated every so often. And when they're actively growing, uh, after they bloom out, they tend to have new leaves appear. So you have to see if they need to be upgraded into a little bit larger container and repot it up, you might say, with that orchid bark or fir bark. And they are pretty heavy feeders uh, to keep that nice green color on the leaves and to initiate more flowers. So like the plant in the middle of this picture with the beautiful purple flowers in full bloom on the uh, two stalks that it has when it's in full bloom like that it can go if you're lucky three or four months so that's a long time the one on the far far right is uh, probably three going on four months and then the ones in the middle and to the left or so you can see there's only one or two blossoms uh, left on that flower stalk so they basically start blooming out from the bottom up so you want to, so you have flowers for a long period of time. Now, when the last flower or so is bloomed out or a spent flower, look at that flower stalk where all the florets were originally on it. And you can kind of go back on it and cut that flower stalk back. Uh, if it kind of withers or dies, you go all the way down where it's nice and green and strong, just above the bud. And if you're lucky, Instead of removing that whole flower spike, if you're lucky, you might get new flowers emerge from that flower spike and get them to rebloom. So this is, without a doubt, one of the easiest, uh, funnest plants to grow for uh, that special lady in your life. And uh, again, when you buy them, uh, handle them with care because you don't want to bruise those flowers when you uh, pull it at the nursery, garden center, the florist. And the way you transport, you don't want to bruise those uh, delicate flowers. Keep the leaves clean of dust or debris. Uh, keep them real shiny as well. Uh, so look at these and try them. I think you'll really like these moth orchids, Phalaenopsis orchids. Now everybody wants to grow roses or tries to grow roses. And we always have all these special occasions. And cut flowers are awesome and have their place. But why just grow why just give a, a cut flower or two? Why not plant a rose garden? And we're going to show you a couple roses that are Texas Superstar plants. And I think the easiest and funnest roses to grow and you'll really will enjoy. This one is Grandma's Yellow Rose. 
not only designated as a Texas superstar, but even all grandmothers would love this rose. It's very beautiful, yellow rose. When the yellow rose program started with the extension service and research, they looked at all these old, old yellow roses in the landscape all over the state. And this original one was found in Nacogdoches, Texas, but how many of us can really spell Nacogdoches? So we decided to go ahead and call it Grandma's Yellow. She would be very happy that you plant it. So being a low input rose and a bush type rose, uh, we want to make sure that we plant it in an area that gets full sun in the landscape, uh, drains well. We amend the soil with good garden mix that has a good amount of finished compost to it. Really work that in with the native soil, mulch these plants, uh, roses. Uh, you trim them back around mid-February, about one-third, particularly bush and landscape roses, as grandma's yellow is. And then we do a real light pruning, cleaning up around mid-August to encourage new growth to come out to get more blooms for the fall season. So most roses bloom the best in winter when we have mild winters very heavy in spring and then in the cool weather of the fall time and they kind of just hunker down and get through the um, summer heat but grandma's yellow is a winner and i think uh, that special lady would really enjoy this beautiful yellow rose as dr larry stein's grandma enjoyed for many years as well even the butterflies love it look how be beautiful and brilliant there's a lot of yellow roses that are out there but a lot of them tend to fade grandma's yellow rose tends to keep that yellow color and makes look at that bouquet of flowers right now so yeah instead of just buying a dozen roses every so often if you grow this type of a rose you can have many bouquets throughout the year and that's a one of the best roses uh, that the texas superstar program has ever put on the market now we go from yellow to a number one pink one which is uh, one of the most popular roses nationwide, is Belinda's Dream Rose, a great, great Texas uh, superstar plant. I think each flower, they, some people call it cabbage roses because there's so many petals on this flower. I think some people sometimes can count 90 to 120 petals just on one flower alone. That's a wonderful champion of pink rose, Belinda's Dream. Again, it's a landscape rose, grows around four feet tall. And I guess you can put Belinda's Dream and Grandma's Yellow on the patio in a large container, but just make sure it's large enough and the plants get enough sun as well. So they do wonderful as a landscape robe, rose. And Belinda's Dream uh, has even been noted as an earth kind rose. Most of the earth kind roses, which uh, Texas A&M horticulturalist and dr steve george is the lead on the earth kind rose program not only for the state of texas but on the lead team for the for the nation on earth kind roses uh the most of these are china type roses so they're land they're true landscape roses low input uh, they do need a little bit pruning uh very little input when it comes to spraying or fertilizing but a little bit extra fertilizer and water will keep them blooming and a little trimming of deadheading the flowers uh, will keep them going as well. Belinda's Dream Rose and of course that uh, Grandma's Yellow Rose are two winners. So consider planting a rose garden for that special lady in your life. A lot of people like cut flowers. You know, a lot of cut flowers are coming back. This is a true hardy perennial Texas superstar plant. This was named after Mark and Mike Fanick's daddy, John Fanick, who basically found this in a ditch on South Presa on the south side of San Antonio with good with a horticulturalist great grand many, many moons ago. And this has been the one of the most popular flocks to grow. There's always a lot of flocks varieties that are out in the market in the springtime, but often a lot of those when they flower, they just don't stand up nice and straight. They flop over uh, after a good rain. <clears throat> and a lot of these old varieties of flocks are they get a lot of powdery mildew problems. John Fanick, without a doubt, is uh, one of the best looking flocks. It also makes a beautiful cut flower. So if you grow this as a big bed of flowers and you let this thing bloom, it's unbelievable how long this 
plant grows, they typically grow about, mm, about close to 30 to 36 inches tall. They like at least six hours of intense sunlight, and it's a hardy perennial that comes back year in and year out with very little inputs to them. You know, just replenish that organic mulch around your perennials. Do a light tidying up once or twice a year and, and a cutback. Some of these perennial beds, when they get real full and established, uh, usually in the fall, particularly if they start blooming in the spring, I like cannas and irises and daylilies. Sometimes you want to go into that flower bed and, and dig them, reset them, separate them some so they can have more space to grow and fill in and they'll bloom much longer. So we do that for some of these plants every fifth year or so. John Fanick Phlox, an excellent addition to your cut flower. Very fragrant as well. And uh, uh, the butterflies uh, love this plant as well. <clears throat> There's a lot of hibiscus out in the market. The hibiscus that are similar to large dinner plates are your perennial hardy hibiscus. This is a series called flare hibiscus, so big, big flowers. You can see the, the different colors in front of us here. These are true Texas superstar hardy perennials. They bloom from mid to late spring through the summertime up to the first frost. They get about four feet tall, huge flowers to them. That's why they call them dinner plate flowers. This would be a cool plant to leave on a container on the patio or find a nice home in the landscape that will bloom year in and year out. They freeze to the ground. They come back from the crown every spring. Like most perennials, you mulch them a couple times and fertilize them two or three times a year, and they'll really perform. A great hardy plant, a plant that mama will really love or that special lady for Mother's Day as well. Now, that flare hibiscus came from Dr. Jerry Parsons' mentor, Dr. Sam McFadden, a great plant breeder who was at the, in Florida at the University Research Center for many years. He not only hybridized and selected uh, the flare hibiscus series, but he also did what we call these old-fashioned southern-type plant, these Altheas, or some people refer to them as Rose of Sharon. Now, this is a deciduous shrub-type plant, meaning that they grow five, six feet or so tall. They lose all the leaves in the wintertime, but it's basically a dormant shrub-type. They do not freeze down to the ground. And being an old southern-type plant, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, old history with this type of plant in the hibiscus family. When they bloom, it's unbelievable. This flower doesn't really show the true picture. Blue is a very hard picture to take. So this one that we're seeing here is a blue angel. It's much, much bluer than this. It's just real hard to take a picture of. And Dr. McFadden also selected a white one. So if you're looking for a more of a permanent, larger type of a landscape plant that really blooms real pretty, uh, look for the McFadden blue angel and white angel, uh, roses, Sharon, Althea's, and I think... Uh, you would really enjoy them. They do much better in the landscape. And when they're really, really established, they are somewhat drought tolerant. But a little bit mulching, fertilizing them a couple times a year in the spring and the fall, and a little bit extra water in the summertime, you'll really get a plant that performs much better and, of course, give you much more large, beautiful blooms. Look for Blue Angel or White Angel, Roses, Sharon, Altheas. Whopper Whopper Begonia. This is a beautiful begonia. This is a standalone plant by itself in a beautiful container on the patio. You can hang it as a hanging basket or do a combination in a huge pot on the on the patio and maybe something semi-cascading like purslane or a petunia or something like that. Or you can do a border plant. You know, the old cocktail series of begonias that have been used for many years in the landscape of vodka and whiskey and gin uh, is nothing compared to the Whopper twice. Twice the flowers, twice the size of the flower, and twice the bloom Whopper begonias. You can find them in beautiful red like this one or scarlet, uh, as well as the bronze leaf ones or the green leaf. These, these types of um, succulent type Begonias are somewhat drought tolerant once they're established, particularly in the landscape. The greener ones tend to grow a little bit better in the shade. The bronze leaf ones 
will perform much, much better in the sun. And keep them well watered and keep them well fertilized in an appropriate size container. That way you get a real nice, healthy plant with lots and lots of uh, blooms on throughout the year to the first frost. They are considered annuals, but as a container plant, and if you protect it somewhat or a mild winter, uh, they can come uh, back and regrow them, you might say, every, uh, for a good two or three years or so. Whopper begonias. Real red or real hot red mandevilla. Uh, some people refer to them as diplodinius. When these came out many, many years ago, it used to be the big, big pink flower called uh, Alice DuPont. But uh, with major breeding for colors and for blooms and for heat resistance, this uh, one in the real series, there's also pink and a white one. But I think the red in the real series, without a doubt, is the best performing type of mandevilla. It is tropical, so it is tender in a unique winter. So it's best really grown in a cool looking hanging basket or a nice container on the patio. And since it's vine-like, you want to have a lattice or trellis uh, to kind of support it some. It loves the sun. Uh, keep it well fertilized. Keep it well watered, especially the July and August heat. And you'll enjoy these. Remember, trumpet-like flowers, you also tend to get hummingbirds and butterflies. So that's an, another added extra feature for this beautiful, real hot red mandevilla. Makes a gorgeous plant. Don't really grow these in the landscape because, again, they're, they're very tropical. They're tender when it comes to overall cold hardiness. And then you can protect it or bring it in a particular location during a cold winter. Real hot red mandevilla, I think a beautiful plant to consider as well as a great gift for Mother's Day. Now, we did have a good talk about a week ago on the Satsuma mandarin oranges and citrus. So, you know, maybe maybe one of these Miho Sito or the newer ones, orange or Arctic frost, might be a unique gift. It's an edible crop, and we know that uh, citrus are fun to grow on, on the patio or once established and sized up some. You can grow them in the landscape, but you know you get not only the edible fruit, but you get the uniqueness and the and the fragrance of the beauty of the flowers that it has on it. So, be it a satsuma mandarin orange, or maybe a lemon or lime, or even a kumquat, I think citrus would be an excellent gift to give uh, to anyone, uh, particularly that special lady in your in your life for Mother's Day. So, consider a citrus tree as another option as well. Water lilies. Well, Texas Dawn and there's a few others that we recognized a few years back as water lilies. Isn't that unique, different plant as a Texas superstar plant or a consideration? So there we go. Maybe go visit uh, Water Garden Jams and talk to Shane over there uh, down the road going towards Seguin. And maybe he can help you with uh, setting up a pond feature. Uh, setting up some water lilies such as Texas Dawn and give you all the rundown how to use the water correctly and how to set up a cool water lily. Some of these water lilies, the different colors are so uniquely different. Some of them are very fragrant. And that's a unique, unique plant to give. And, of course, going into the summer heat, wouldn't we want something uniquely different and also a water feature because the sound of water is so soothing and cooling during the hot summer months so maybe check with water garden gems or study up more on texas dawn and all these other water lilies uh, on the texas superstar website look how beautiful they are and some of them are so fragrant as well so we put a couple bonus plants as we all do so we talked gave you a few ideas on some mother's day plants but you know there's so many plants out there uh, to consider uh, not only the ones that we mentioned, some of the Texas Superstar ones, but also the traditional ones. And let's show you a couple bonus plants that I always like to showcase. So for a nice, cool-looking indoor type of plant, very shiny leaves similar to the closet plant, the peace lily, is your anthurium, your bleeding art. Beautiful red lipstick flowers to it. And uh, they also come in pinks. There's a white one, but I think the red lipstick one, without a doubt. So it's a long-lasting, real cool, uh, blooming indoor plant. And uh, you can add that with your closet plants or your moth orchid.
for uh, some more interior time, indoor type of plants that look nice and bloom for a long period of time. Patio roses, you know, a lot of the nurseries, not only looking for Belinda's dream rose or grandma's yellow rose and other roses, other colors, a stick of earth kind and some of these beautiful roses, but hey, wouldn't that be a uniquely different uh, type of a gift, a patio rose tree? You know, uh, put it on the patio in a nice uh, decorative pot. Yeah, you're going to have to do some trimming, maybe a little bit spraying occasionally, but uh, low inputs, and then you can um, enjoy it for many, many years to come, and then maybe some nice cascading trailing uh, flowers on the bottom of the container as well. So for other landscape and gardening ideas, besides some of the ones we mentioned as um, uh, considerations for Mother's Day and that special lady in your life, please utilize our Aggie Horticulture website, our Bear County Extension Service website. We have a lot of archived information on there as well, but keep an, on, keep an eye on it throughout the year and all the things that we offer here locally with the Extension Service and seasonal um, educational opportunities as well and then plantanswers.com is a great way to look at years and years of archive information grow from dr jerry parsons and dr calvin finch um, don't forget to um, uh, if in doubt get your mom a nice gift from one of your favorite independent nurseries but get her something and that special lady in your life uh, we also have molly keck our entomologist you know no plant is foolproof there's always going to be potentially an issue. So uh, some of these plants that we talked about might get some insect issues. But like any plant, be it a vegetable, fruit tree, or ornamental, if you get the right plant, a healthy plant, you maintain it to the best ability, you give it the right amount of sunlight, you manage the weeds, you keep it well watered and ample nutrition, then you should minimize insects. But if you do have some insect issues, Molly Keck, our entomologist, is gonna kind of cover some of the insects that might get on some of these plants, um, the identification of the insects, as well as uh, how to minimize them a little bit, but also properly uh, get them out of your plants as well. So thank you for joining today's uh, seasonal seminar on Mother's Day gift plant ideas. Hope you got a few good information out of it. And for all our gardening webinars that we do, please visit my Extension 210 YouTube channel for further uh, seminars that we've archived to review and to get more knowledge gained. And then don't forget, if you need to contact me, David Rodriguez, that's my email address. So if you have any gardening or landscape questions, don't hesitate to email me. If you need something uh, identified, a weed, an insect, a plant, or other, uh, please send them as good quality attachments, not part of the email uh, uh, that we can help answer you to the best ability. And this is uh, our last bonus plant right there. That's your butterfly rose, or what we call a metabolist rose, another China type rose, an earth kind rose with three or four different colors of flowers. It is a big rose, it gets about eight feet tall. So that might be another Mother's Day gift ideas. Remember, always learn and have fun and happy gardening everyone.